So today we will be reading Shri Vilapa Kusumanjali, verse number 47. O oh, Bhavye, beautiful, auspicious girl, when will the queen of Raja as I bring her the sweets, hold her forehead on my forehead. In loving joy, as if she's my mother. And inquire about your well-being, knowing me to be yours. O oh, Bhavye, beautiful, auspicious girl, when will the queen of Raja, as I bring her the sweets, hold her forehead on my forehead in loving joy, as if she's my mother? and inquire about your well-being, knowing me to be yours. In a divine vision, Sri Raghunath perceived his devotional service. And now that the vision is gone, he prays. In this way, it goes on continuously. <laughs> Shiradika sends Tulasi off to Nandishwara with sweet for Krishna. When Tulasi arrives at Nandishwara, she keeps the plate with eatables on a pro proper place and bows down to Mother Yashoda. Mother Yashoda embraces Tulasi, affectionately holds her forehead on Tulasi's forehead and asks her about Radhika's welfare. Sri Radhika is called Bhavya here or auspicious girl. She who works for Krishna's welfare. Maya Shoda loves Radhika as much as her own mother Kirtida does. And Srila Raghuna Dasa says, she loves Radhika as much as she loves Krishna even. How much Mother Yashoda loves Radharani. Srila Rupa Goswami has written, She is loved by Achyuta's mother. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. So, we were listening about this beautiful relationship between Radhika, Mother Yashoda, and also very nice, tender, warm relationship between Yashoda and Radhika's maidservant. So all relationships in Vrindavan are full of pure love. 
selfless love. And this is the only place in all spiritual unlimited creation where this pure love, natural love, exists completely free of all other aspects of worshipping. It's free from awe and reverence. And this is the land, the place, where devotees are actually only in love and nothing else for their beloved Shtadiv. So in the words, Raghunata is saying and addressing Radhika O Bavye, Bavye, beautiful, auspicious girl. And next he is saying, when will the queen of Vraja? He is mentioning the, another person. And we know that Radhika is also queen of Vrindavan. She is the queen. But Raghunath is saying there is one more queen. Yashodama. So why he is saying that there is a two queens in Vrindavan? Because each of them are situated in her own bath, in her own love towards Krishna for his benefits. And each of those two queens are embodiment of motherly love and also embodiment of this loving relationship, full of amorous love. So the queen of Rindavana, like Mother Yashoda, is embodiment of motherly love. And what does it mean to be embodiment of motherly love? First of all, she is her whole heart is beating for her son, for his benefit, to give him a pleasure like a mother to the son. But we can see that because she is embodiment of motherly love, she has also the love for everyone. And this is sign of someone who has motherly love. For this kind of person, all others are her children. And she behaves like this. She feels like this. Because she is in her own natural position of Vatsalya, or in this case, mother position. So, all relationships from Vrindavan are full of love, but what is unique is that each devotee is situated in his own loving position. And this kind of love is completely selfless. And nowhere in the spiritual world cannot be found this kind of love, this selfishness. And Vrindavan is natural place for love, for the natural love. And Rangunath here, in these words, is glorifying Radhika, who is Bhavye, who is all emotional because all her emotions are focused on her Mohan, on Nagara, beloved. And she is also auspicious because whatever she thinks, whatever she is doing, whatever she is feeling is for his pleasure, for his benefit. So knowing that, deep in the heart, 
Mother Yashoda, who is also a embodiment of motherly love, she is receiving Radhika's messenger, maid servant, with full love. Because you are coming from Radharani. And I know that whatever Radhika is doing, she is doing for the benefit of my son. So I also love you. Because in your presence, in your form, I can see all Radhika's emotions. I can see, and I'm putting out of my deep affection, I'm putting my forehead on your forehead, fondling you. You are so sweet girl, and you are coming from Radharani. So, this affectionate attitude, we should learn from those who are deeply absorbed in their own bath. I remember Prabhupada wrote somewhere in Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto that those, those devotees who are attracted to Vatsalya Rasa should meditate very deeply with full focus on Mother Yashoda and how she is giving the milk from her breasts to little Gopal. So Prabhupada is giving instructions how to do the bhajan for devotees who feel attraction for Vatsalya Rasa. They need role model. And the best role model for Vatsalya Rasa is Mother Yashod. So in the same manner, our Acharyas are giving us advices, instructions, showing us the way how to meditate on Radhika, who is Bhavye, who is completely absorbed in her love to Krishna. Because the word bhava also means absorption. And what gives that absorption? Love. Love gives most intense absorption. Because this love is something which can only satisfy the soul. And when the love exists in the heart, then we can say that person really exists. Without love, no one actually exists, really, in his real, natural position. So, Raghunath here, Rasamai was reading in the beginning of the purpose. He perceived vision after vision, after vision, after vision. Because all these lilas are appearing to him according to their own will. His bhajan, he's crying to Radhika. He's from Sadaka Vish. But his crying is the sign of his love, pure love. And Radhika, her, his beloved Ishtadev, cannot resist but to appear his. But in the same manner, he is not pushing her. You have to appear to me. Because 
when the person is situated in Prem, he is naturally humbled. And we can see here that eagerness and humility are coming together. Sometimes persons are saying, I want to see Radharani. I want to see Lila. But this is not the sign of eagerness. This is the sign of bodily consciousness. Eagerness are coming from the soul. Eagerness are coming from the spiritual identity which is connected with others who are on that platform. Eagerness which is coming from the bodily consciousness of life is just a passion. But real eagerness is coming from the soul. And automatically brings humility in the life of sadhaka. So from these words, and also from the words of Baba, we can feel how much eagerness and humility is present in the heart of Raghunath. And we can see that even in his Swarup, like Tulsi Majari, he is so humbly approaching to Queen of Raja, Mother Yashoda. Because someone who has so much love, all his activities or her activities are also filled with such a loveliness, with such a humility. And we call it sweetness. Sweetness doesn't exist without humility. And Krishna, when he is most sweet, when he is humble, in front of Radhika's lotus feet. So this is Vraj Mood. And Anantadas Babaji and our Guru Dev are trying through their words to help us to enter in this mood, these feelings, these kind of thoughts and also activities. How much Mother Yashoda loves Radharani, Anathadas Babaji is saying. Why she is loving so much? Because she knows how much love is in Radhika's heart to her son. She doesn't want to know the details between them. But she feels, you know, mother always feels who loves her son the most. This is natural, motherly love. And automatically, because she loves Radhika so much, automatically she loves her maidservants also, in the same manner. In the same manner, like their own mothers also. Because she recognized in the heart, she recognized who is really loyal and fully focused in love with Swamini or with my Gopal. Naturally, she recognized that. She doesn't need philosophy to convince her who loves most her son. No, she feels it. I said something, what came to me, but Gurudev, if you want to add, Rasamayi can read.
It was only seven or eight hours since Radhika was at Nandishvara to cook Krishna's breakfast. Yet, Mother Yashoda is already very anxious about her welfare. How much Yashoda loves the maidservant, knowing them to belong to Shirada. She loves them as if she's their own mother. I want to say something. Usually, we are listening that Krishna is Vishay and Radhika is Ashraya. Vishay means object of love. And Radharani or devotee of Krishna is Ashraya. He's the shelter, he's the place, he's the reservoir, or she is of that love, possessor of the love. But now we have another situation that Manjari is Ashraya and Radhika is Vishal. Radhika is the only object of love for Manjas, for Kinkari. And Kinkari is the reservoir, the place, treasure of that love, of that devotional service. And knowing that, Mother Yashoda, who is also Ashraya, treasure, place for motherly love, for Krishna, she feels that. Devotee who is Ashraya of his beloved Ishtadev always recognize another devotee who is also Ashraya for his for the same Ishtadev or for his own Ishtadev. And this kind of devotee also immediately recognizes who doesn't have Ishtadev and who is not a Shraya, who is not a place of love. So, Many times we are listening about this Vishaya, Ashraya, object of love, who is the subject of love, and Krishna wants it to become Radhika, exchange the role, he wants it to become Ashraya, and he put it in his heart, Radhika, to be the goal of his life. But also, he wanted to taste. What does it mean to be Radhika's Ashraya? That Radha is from the point of Dasi, of Manjari. And here we can see how much this Ashraya, condensed love, is present in the heart of Raguna, for Radharan. And when he appears like a condensed reservoir of love, for Radhika in front of Yashoda, Yashoda immediately feels Radhika's presence. She sees in Manjari's eyes all emotions, maybe not all, but enough emotions for motherly love in the eyes of Manjari. So this is the power of real connection. When devotee is focused on his beloved Ishtadev, and in that moment, 
she is becoming the treasure also of love for that Ishtadin. And we Sadakas, neophytes, we need to approach to such a treasure and to connect our hearts with this source, with this real ashraya, person who is a embodiment of bhakti, of seva, who is himself is drowning in this ocean of Manjari Bhava. So this is what Yashoda is recognizing when she sees little Manjari. She feels all Radhika's emotions that are focused for the benefit of her Gopal. I just wanted to say, Radhe, Sri Raghunadas, who floats on the waves of prayer, directly perceives this pattern within his heart. Through their own example, the Acharyas have shown that one must be very eager to attain one's Ishtade. The devotee should never think, whatever I do, I am satisfied with it. It is the nature of devotion that one is never satiated with it. In Brihad Bhagavatamrita, Sri Sanatana Goswami describes how Narada Muni prayed for the following boom. O Sri Krishna Chandra, May, by your mercy, nobody ever be satiated with their love and devotion for you. For you are transcendental bliss personified. Shri Krishna replied, O teacher of all clever art, what kind of boon do you seek from me? My devotion, my mercy, and my love are naturally inexhaustible. You have wandered around everywhere, starting from Prayag Tirtha, Hearing about my devotees and seeing them. They are all objects of my mercy. They have all their desires fulfilled. And they can deliver the whole world. Although you see that there are different levels of them, you cannot see any one of them is ever satiated with their devotion to me. Therefore, please pray for another boon to me. The devotee should know that his bhajan is in a diseased state if he feels satiated in his sadhana. One can measure 
one's advancement and taste for bhajan in the way in which one is greedy, eager, and unsatisfied with spiritual flavors. Radhe, maybe we can stop here if someone wants to share a little bit. Uh, I will put just to see who is here. Gurudev, if you want to share. Gora Chandra. Goravani, yeah, I see you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I want to share something because it's so helpful if devotee sharing. When I give lecture, I also depend on the mercy of the Vaishnavas that they support me. So Actually, I don't want to talk. I want to listen Goranga Sundar. <laughs> but same time, I want to support also something. Manjaris and Radharani, they are one. Always. Whenever there is Radhika, means Manjaris are there also. Manjaris, they are like bumblebees, always circumlating the flower. And when there is a Manjari, Everyone knows Radharani is near. When Krishna sees a manjari, his emotions start swelling because he knows Radharani is near. If she is not visible right now, then at least everyone understands the Manjari is here because of Radharani. She will never be here independently from her own desire. She is only coming because she has something to do for Radharani. She is in the service of Radharani. So Gurudev always explained that Manjaris are the shadow of Radharani. They never leave Radharani for one sec second. But here we see that the Manjari is going alone to bring some sweets to Nanda Gaon. This is also an example of the oneness, the oneness in service. I feel same like with Gurudev now. I could spend a long time in COVID time being together with him in union. Then I'm now separated for more than one year. But I try to be in his service. So I want to have a oneness. 
directly or in the service, in union or in separation, there's oneness. And why Ashoda? She loves the Manjari also so much because she is in the service of Radharani always. I listen one Leela or the background of the Parakia mood, how this came because. It is very natural for the bridge Basis that it was very expected that Radha and Krishna, they will marry. Yeah. Nanda Baba, he is king. Brishadbanu, he is king. Krishna is the most beautiful boy. The most capable boy of whole Vrindavan, Radharani. She is the most beautiful princess. Everyone expected that they will marry in the future. But then by the arrangement of Yoga Maya, they could not marry. They made a chart, astrology, astrology chart, both they have a very good karma. But if they become couple, something bad will happen. The chart saying that. <laughs> Some big problem will come to one of them. I think poor Namasi, she did the chart. So they could not marry, everyone was shocked. But it was an arrangement by Yoga Maya to manifest the Parakya Bhav. That she has to marry another man, but secretly she will meet Krishna. So, Inside of Yashoda, there's always the thinking, she should be my daughter-in-law. She has this bath for her, always. And at least she could manage that Radharani is cooking every day for Krishna. Yeah. Shri Radhe. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was so nice sharing. That. So when Manjari is bringing the plate full of sweets to Mother Yashoda, what she is bringing? She is bringing Radhika's golden heart, full of sweet emotion, in the form of sweet. It's Parakya Bhava. But Mother doesn't understand this. But she has some intuition, but she doesn't understand completely the situation when Manjari put her head on Radhika's chest and felt all feelings in Radhika's heart. And with all these feelings, she brings this plate outside is looking like a plate with full of sweets say krishna but actually 
she was giving the heart of Radhika, golden heart of Radhika, full of sweets, amritas, of her sweet feelings for him. And he, like an expert, he's tasting this. And Manjur is observing in front of elders, they are exchanging their parakya above. Thank you, Gorachanda. You inspired me. That's <laughs> it. How eager Sri Rupa and Raghunatha were. Hearing it, even a stone heart will melt. Sri Rupa said, Sri Rupa Goswami said, You are Sukhamaya and Sukhamayi. You are always absorbed in blissful pastimes. I thought I would not show you how my heart is burning, but I cannot keep from telling you anymore. See how your Rupa's heart is burning. Utkali Kavalari, one. All the pastime places are still here, right before my eyes. And even today, these pastimes are going on. But I don't get any response. Your pastimes are not floating upon my eyes. No. A devotee should wander around like mad in this way. Sri Rupa and Raguna stayed under different trees every night just to experience the different spiritual pastimes that Radha and Mohana were performing at each place. When the devotee is in Raja, he should feel, even now, your pastimes are going on here. Why I cannot see them? Please let me see what pastimes are going on now. Let me be so fortunate. Why can't I see Vrindavana as your real, actual playground? So this is the mood how Sadaka has to live in Vrindavan. Baba is giving very clearly the way of consciousness in Sadaka. Which kind of consciousness he should nourish. And this is the way how he's practicing living in Vrindavan. We should practice to live in Vrindavan. This is practice. Until Vrindavan opens by the Kripa its doors. Practicing to live in Vrindavana, it means 
not only to be in Vrindavan, but also to be out of Vrindavan, with physical body. I am living in my country, whatever it is, and I am practicing still to live in Vrindavan. Because I have strong faith in the words of Acharya. And through this strong faith, it said, it's strong faith in the scriptures. But what does it mean, strong faith in the scriptures? It means strong faith in the words of Acharyas. I want to practice to be more and more and more absorbed in living in Vrindavan. And now, in this moment, for example, so many devotees are present from different countries, even continents. But if we have the same goal, same desire to be focused on this specific pastime, which is going on eternally in Vrindavan, then all together, all of us, in this moment are living in Vrindavan. So Vrindavan is not a geographical place, in transcendental place. It can expand wherever devotee opens his heart for this Vrindavan Lilas. Then he is living in Vrindavana and Vrindavan is living in him. This is my understanding. This is my feeling, but honestly to say this is my practice. So I don't know for other practice. So Baba is very clearly saying, even now your pastimes are going here. Why I cannot see them? Someone who has real eagerness in the soul, in the heart. On another side of his existence, he feels this lamentation. Everything is here. But where I am, this is lamentation, according to the lamentations of Rasik devotees. This kind of lamentation is following the footsteps of separation of Rasik devotees. And this kind of lamentation has to come from the heart. Not from monkey mind or whatever, from the heart. And when devotee feels just little lamentation of Raguna, little lamentation of An Anantadas Babaji, who is writing this commentary, because he is lamenting. If devotee Sadaka feels that, then he is practicing proper sadhana, which slowly but surely will bring him by the Kripa to ultimate goal. So sometimes I ask myself, how? I can feel such a strong separation if I didn't have any experience of Lilas. This is the key. I'm telling to myself, this is the key. Connect your heart with those who has genuine separation, feeling of lamentation. 
And because their lamentation is transcendental, it will penetrate and inf will be infused in your heart. So this is my fate. Maybe someone has another. So we should learn the art of living in Vrindavan. Right, uh, very right. Beautiful. Please go and save your food. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, <clears throat> yes, I. I also agree with that. We have to get the mood from someone who has this mood. I remember sometimes I want to go outside of Munge Mandir, going to Radhakund, stay some days there. Gurudev say, "Yes, yes, very good." Govardhan Parikra, uh, yes, very good. Going here, going there, yes, very good. But I'm not like a madman, like Rupa and Raghunath, visiting all the Leela places with greed, searching which Leela is happening here. Because for me, the door is closed. Because I don't catch the mood of my Gurudev yet. When this door is open, then we become mad and roaming around in Vrindavan, searching for Radharani in the lila places. <laughs> but without this connection, we are only tourists going here and there. It's good to go there, give dandavats, ask for blessings, ask for mercy. But what is this blessing? What is this mercy? That I first get the mood and the connection. So also Sadhu Sangha before Bhajana Kriya. First I need real Sangha, then my Bhajan can start. So sometimes the vote is asking me, oh I'm going to Vrindavan, what should I do? I say, you are going first time? I say, say yes, first time. Huh? Say yes, it's very good. New place, different culture, holy place, new experience. Visit some places, no. go to Radhakun, Govardhan, see that. But more important is connect with Radha Mohan in the temple and connect with Guru Dev. This is main thing. Otherwise, you only stay tourist in Vrindavan. Yeah. First to get the mood in my heart, and then I can do bhajan. Thank you, Burachandra. This is the point. First get the moon. First be infused with the mood of Gurudev, who is Manjari, and then practice bhajan. How we can practice bhajan? 
if we are not deeply absorbed in the mood. And here we can also listen to those who are absorbed in this Manjari Bhagavan. And for that also, it's not going on if I only know that my Guru is Manjari. It's not enough. It's just the beginning step. I have to accept his infusion. I have to allow him to steal my heart. Because when he steals my heart, Radha Mohan will steal my heart. And then, like Gora Chandra said, then I will become mad. If someone steals your heart, you are becoming mad. So this madness is rati. So devotees who are sincere sadakas are hankering and lamenting for that rati, this madness. But it starts from Shri Guru Charane Rati. Madness. He is not a goal, but he has the Radha Mohanik's his heart. And they are jumping from his heart in the heart of Sadaka to steal the Sadaka's heart. To make him mad. That's... If someone steal your heart, how you can survive? Without heart, nobody can live. Somebody stealing your wallet, you will run after. Hey, hey, wait, wait, give me back, give me back. Same with your heart. If somebody take your heart, you 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 want it back. Yeah, I cannot live without my heart. But this is the madness and love. If the stealer of your heart asking you, you want it back. Then you will say, no, 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 keep it. <laughs> I only want to run after it always, but I don't want it back. <laughs> yes. Keep it, yes. keep it. This is the madness. Somebody steal my heart, but I don't want it back, but I'm running after it. Who has my heart? I want that person. <laughs> this is the madness. <laughs> And from that position, Raghunath was speaking the words Tavai Vasmi, Tavai Vasmi, Najiva Vetvai Vina. From that position, you already stole my heart. And you know that. And I know that. And I don't have anyone else than you. So please, steal my heart more. <laughs> by putting me close to your lotus feet. <laughs> that is, I like this kind of sharings. Maybe Gurudev can share something with us. Sri Raghunath has chosen Sri Radha's dearmost playground, Sri Radha Kund, as his place of worship. And by the mercy of the Kunda, he directly perceives all her transcendental pastimes. Now, he is not Raghunath, he is Tulasi Manjari. Mother Jashoda holds her forehead on my forehead and asks me 
about Sri Radhika's welfare, saying, How is my Radhika? Will I not even experience one drop of this affection? The neophyte devotees should lament like this also. Maja Shoda loves the Kinkaris so much because she knows that they belong to Sri Radha. Radharani's affection is infused in her maidservant. And when Mother Yashoda sees them, she is as happy as when she sees Radharani herself. Blessed is Sri Radhika's service. The devotee should eagerly wander around from forest to forest of Raja, crying and crying. O oh, hey Vrindavana, O oh, Vrindavana's inhabitants, O oh, Vrindavana's sky, wind, trees, wines, deers and birds, let everyone know that I am Radhika's maidservant. You all be kind to me. Make this consciousness within me very firm. Oh, Radhe, where are you? This whole forest is illuminated by your golden splendor. Keep me alive with just one drop of this luster. I don't have anyone else but you. Shinartamas Prartana you are famous throughout the three worlds for being so compassionate on the fallen and unfortunate souls. Hearing this from the mouths of the sadhus, I have joyfully taken shelter of you. Don't let me down. You are my shelter. I am living in Vrindavana, the kingdom of devotional enthusiasm. But I am simply engrossed in bodily consciousness. How unfortunate I am. When I hear and chant the great words of the Acharyas, I will certainly attain that devotional eagerness. Then I will wander from forest to forest, crying, Where are you, O Radharani? Your golden luster illuminates the whole of Rindam. My mind and eyes subsist on a mere drop of this luster. Day and night, there will be only this prayer in the heart. Hari Hari, when will that day be mine? When I can touch their bodies, see them, 
and serve them. I will blissfully render service with Lalita and Vishaka, stringing garlands of different flowers. I fill up a golden basket with camphor and betel leaves and place them on their lips. Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan are the treasure of my heart and that means of my subsistence. All glories to the Savior of the fallen. Please give me this treasure. I do not want anything else but that. This is the pure experience of the Acharyas. I don't want anything else but that. Sorry that I'm interrupting you in this flow of listening. Just want to point how important it is to drink with the ears the words of a charge. Narottam Das Thakur, who is one of them, is giving this advice, showing us sadhakas the way. And what is he saying? What is he saying? Hearing from the mouths of sadhus, I have joyfully taken shelter of you. Listening from the mouth of sadhus. I don't have Sukritis. I don't have any kind of Sukritis. I have Dushkritis. Sinful impressions. But I don't have Sukritis. And my only hope is the words which are coming from the mouth of pure experience acharyas. And I pray for strong, firm faith in their words. When really firm faith appears in my heart, then my bhajan will become enthusiastic, firm, Guru Nishta, Ishta Nishta, Swarup Nishta. So this Nishta mood, this firm faith in Ishta Dev, not Sanchari, firm faith. Like Gorachandra said, in Guru mood, firm faith in his mood, his heart, his feelings, and Swarupnisht in my personal existence. This will bring the strength, real strength, or real bhajan. And if we are listening and accepting the words of this Mahavani, words of Acharyas, Then the taste, attachment, madness for Radhika will grow in the heart of Sadak. We need this madness. We need this attachment. We need this taste for relish. And we also need, desperately need, firm faith. So Narutama is saying here clearly, hearing 
from the mouth of Sadhus, I have joyfully taken shelter of you. And I don't want anything else but that. This is the firm faith, not up and down, not weak, firm faith, which is based also on attachment. For Ishtadev, Gurudev, and Rasikacharyas. So this is not philosophy. This is not a theory, actually. This is the living life of sadaka, of someone who is really eager from deep, deepest core of his soul. Samay, would you continue if no one wants to share something? Rade, Rade. I was just remembered by your inspiring words that Gurudev gave me a very practical advice I will never forget. He said, First, you change inside, then outside will come. But also in spiritual practice, usually we tend to look in the outside first. But this actually is like a role for all levels, first inside. If we do not start inside to feel what we want, how we can get it? If you don't feel, I want that, then you have to have contact with a person who already has it and is very happy with that. Or a person who really wants to go to that goal. And in this way, we will become infected. Like we say, this rati will jump from one heart to another heart and start the fire inside. And this fire, if this fire is not burning inside, we don't need to act on the outer platform because it will go in vain. If you do something with a half heart, we all know that, it will not work out. So our first endeavor is to set fire in the heart. And how we can do this? We on our own, not possible. That's why we are sharing here. We are reading the words of the Acharyas, because they have this fire inside. And when we hear the wonderful explanations of Anandadas Babaji, then the fire starts. We can hear his lamentation like he is humbly saying, Oh, in my heart it didn't start yet. I have no relation. Although my Guru was offering me a long time ago to the lotus feet of Radha. But actually this is the fire. He is lamenting because he has the fire. This is the fire. Otherwise, how he could lament if he is not interested? 
he is very much interested to reach this goal. That's why he's lamenting and that's why he's saying, I don't have. Like Gurudev sometimes is also begging for the mercy. That's his fire, that's his rati. He would ask anyone if it would bring him further to Radharani's lotus feet. So if you're really, really, really on the point that you want it, then you first have to set fire in the heart. And this is the easiest way to have association with others who have this fire. So no question, when we read Radharasa Sudhanidhi, when we read Vilap Kusumanjali, there's a big fire. There's biggest fire. And then our heart will also set fire by the time. And then our sadhana actually will also come out of this fire. Everything will be born out of this fire. Otherwise, with half heart, our sadhana will be never satisfying. And even then it will be not satisfying, because you want more and more and more, always. And if we don't lament and if we don't cry for our goal, how we want to reach it, So first inside, then outside. Jai Shri Radhe. Thank you very, very much, Gauravanishi. Thank you very much. We should stay in the Vrajavan, in this mood, not having a liking for anything else. But unfortunately, a soul like me likes many other things. Despite living in Vrajavan, profit, adoration, distinction, money, and what not. Where will I find this treasure of my heart, for whom I have given up everything to come to Vraja, Radha Mohan? There is no other hope than their mercy. Tulasi enjoys Mother Jashoda's affection. Mother Jashoda engages Shiradika in cooking for her Gopal because she knows that it will increase his lifespan, his health, and his beauty. This purpose is clearly visible in her eyes. How much possessiveness she feels for the eatables that were cooked by Radhika's own hands. Mother Jashoda is Gopala's Kalyana Karini, she who arranges for Gopala's welfare. This is clearly visible in her eyes. 
Tulasi understands her mood and thus calls Radhika Bhavye. She who works for Krishna's welfare. Tulasi's heart is filled with Mother Yashoda's affection and Shiradika's great glories. And this makes her very proud. Suddenly, the divine vision vanishes and anxiously, Raghunadasa falls on the bank of Radhakund and prays for devotional service. Shirasika Chandra Dasa sings, O Radhike, you are the very form of auspiciousness. Receiving your order, I will take different kinds of sweets and go to Nandarani, Queen Jashoda. Mother Jashoda will blissfully put everything away and then place her forehead to my forehead, full of affection. There is interruption in internet. Rasamai, it's some interruption. We didn't hear you just this last words. No, still. Okay, reconnect. Yes. Yeah. I can read the last sentences because obviously Rasamai has some technical problems. Rasika Chandra Das sings, O oh Radhike, you are the very form of auspiciousness. Receiving your order, I will take different kinds of sweets and go to Nandarani. Queen Yashoda. Mother Yashoda will blissfully put everything away and then place her forehead to my forehead, full of affection, as if she is my mother. Then she will inquire about your welfare knowing me to be your girlfriend. Brother. We will stop here. It's the proper time to stop. <laughs> so, <clears throat> thank you very much for everything. Radhe. <laughs> Gorachandra wants to say? Uh, uh. I wanted to say something about the importance of hearing. <laughs> and then the confirmation came when Rastamai, we could not listen anymore. <laughs> Harikata was stopped. So, to listen is the most important thing. 
we are always asking for, oh, I need mercy, I need mercy. How the mercy is coming? Coming through the ears. Five hundred years ago, they just wrote some books, no? not many copies, maybe some books was there. So nobody reading, everybody listen only. Srimad Bhagavat was actually it is said that writings or scriptures only exist in Kali Yuga because people they cannot remember. Brain becomes so small that we have to write down everything. In other yugas everything is spoken and remembered. Bhagavad Gita Krishna spoke it, Arjun listened. Everything is about listening. First process of devotion is service, Shravana. And even if we watch to the bridge Basis, what they are doing here in this Leela. Yashoda want to listen. How is Radharan? Everyone want to talk no? about Shravana Mukhyatana. Oh, you listen what happened today, then they discuss, then they remember, and they relish. In one of the Chatur Sloki of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying, no, my devotees, they always they sit together. They always discuss my Leelas. And they experience great happiness by doing that. And enlightenment. There's nothing else to do. Sometimes we don't think that listening to lecture actually is devotional service. My ears are serving the words of the Acharyas, the words of Guru Dev. I can connect myself <laughs> by listening. And by listening, the mood is coming. I remember many years ago, There was a Theta Maharaj from Hungary, I think. Theta Maharaj preaching in Hungary and Bulgaria. I think Theta Maharaj, yeah. He visited Gurudev sometimes in Munge Mandir. <clears throat> and one time he shared with someone, I don't remember. And he shared like, I'm a little surprised. Devotees of Sadhu Maharaj, they are doing so nice service, but almost nobody coming to the lecture and listen. <laughs> it was, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. But yes, I myself can say, I try to do service no, with my body, but I could not understand the importance of listening. And Baba also always writing in his books. Shravana, Kirtana, Smarana, that has to go on, always. Or in hidden paths of devotion, Narayan Maharaj saying, some things a priority in devotional service, some things they are secondary, some things they are even neutral. But 
priority shravanam ketanam smaranam never can stop that has to be done always so the ears are our most precious thing that we can use to receive some mercy but then i also found out that i don't want to listen everything i only want to listen what is giving me some feeling i don't want to listen to information i only want to listen what is helping me to increase my mood and my feelings and that is very rare cannot listen everywhere so if we realize that then we can become eager to choose the nice lectures and with eagerness listen because you cannot find so much this kind of katha this is like water in the desert we need this to survive So we should be eager to listen sweet katha of goranga sundara shri radhe thank you the duration baya you exaggerate but you are right actually we should profile our listening and if we don't have fix our goal then we don't have discrimination what to listen and what not to listen but if we have fixed our goal our bar then automatically desire to listen whatever can bring me down deeply in that bath will be attracted to our heart and our thirsty ears then the process of listening can really start without defining the goal listening real listening proper listening is not existing and is not possible this is just a ritual but like gora chandra said this is devotional service with ears our ears are becoming paraphernalia for worshiping for seva because our heart is burning gora vani said burning heart makes ears to be paraphernalia for seva not only when the goal is fixed if we still have a taste for swimming in all directions listening with the ears everything like gorachandra say information information we can be very good swimmer with very strong muscles but the diving is completely another process and thank you very much gora chandra for mentioning this important point of proper listening and devotional service which is listening the mahavan and i think everyone sorry and i think everyone of us has experience in association with gurudev who is always pointing out listen 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 and we think that we are listening but what is the result of this listening 
we can see in our heart. Gauravani, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, no, I, no. You finish. Um, I, I just wanted to add because it's such a wonderful point, actually, uh, Gauravani made and you elaborated again here. So the connection between listening and remembering it's very, very easy to remember something you get an inner picture to. But how to get an inner picture of a theme? If somebody is telling you something, your swamis are actually acting. They create an inner picture. Oh, internet was instable. You heard anything? <laughs> so the six Goswamis actually, they create an inner picture in us. How does that work? Because they are sharing feelings, not information. Like Gorachandra said, if you hear information, you need brain remembrance and it's not so easy to go into that theme and remember it but if somebody is sharing feelings your feelings respond then you get a picture of the scene and we always remember best pictures of feelings because this is connected with our eternity, with the soul. The brain is not connected with the soul. It can be, but usually not. And if it's so, it's true emotions, the connection. So, but the feelings are connected with the soul. The false ego may influence, but the connection is there. So the more pure we hear, the more pure are the pictures, the more real are the pictures, and the more we can remember. That's why it's so... It's, it's such an important point, actually, that we hear and from hearing, we go into smarana, because pictures means smarana. You get pictures, you get a vision, you get some impress, which stays actually. So that's why it is so important to hear from someone who has feelings of what he is talking about. I just wanted to serve your points, actually. Jai Shri Radhe. So, Radhe Radhe, thank you very much, everyone, for all your participation in all levels of your existence. I'm sorry for my arrogance. I'm sorry for my mistakes. If I offended someone, be, mer be merciful, please. Excuse me. And I hope that Radha Mohan Gurudev at least will take some drop and make it bigger of our seva. Radha Radha. Dandavat Gurudev, embrace you Gurudev, and all Vaishnavas. Uh, thank you, Rasamai. I love you every day. Jai. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you, Gauravani. Thank, thank you, Bhaiya. <laughs> so, so many sweet points. Thank you. Thank you, Goranga Sundara. Thank you very much.
That's why it's so nice to see Lila's 